I'm not fine. Yeah. You able to tell me what you mean, Mothers, daughters, sisters, outcasts, meet Lady P and the sex workers of Makeni, Sierra Leone. Some of them, they are my sisters. Some of them, they are my colleagues. And some of them, they are my... <laughs> Come and see. But this is not a world full of fun and laughter. For the daughter, you know, pay you, beat you, rape you, and then they call sex worker. It's a job that can cost them their life. Rather get the girl owner, rather get the person born. If me begin to do anything, part and cut and can't kill her. Some will suffer a terrible death. Those who live will have their lives changed forever. What's happening? What's happening? And some will emerge with new hope. <laughs> this is the story of a group of women who want justice, who want a better life. The police are done, they receive so many pains and attacks. So I hope safe me, picking can be light. They will fetch for me, fetch for the one day they see the advantage by. April 2020, coronavirus arrives in Makini, one of Sierra Leone's biggest cities. Few will help those who fall seriously ill in the streets for the fear of catching COVID. They are left to die. The scars caused by the Ebola epidemic six years ago run too deep. My name is Tyson Conte. I am a Sierra Leonean filmmaker. Makeni is my hometown. You can feel the pandemic panic in the air. We call it Wahala, a local word which means fear, crisis, chaos. As the virus spreads and the government curfew kicks in, chaos is all around me. Long before COVID-19, Many in this city, we are struggling to survive. Coronavirus is making that struggle harder, and McKinney sex workers know that better than most. Now, every client counts even more than usual. I want to. I wait for Even though their job is legal, Sex workers don't get government cash to ease the impact of coronavirus, unlike many others. Viewed as immoral outcasts in a seedy underworld, many Sierra Leoneans think sex workers are best shunned and avoided. Hey, sir. I'm not fine. You would tell me to me, Sabi. <laughs> I confess, I thought the same. But when I heard these women were begging for food, I felt sympathy for them. Especially when so many others are receiving government handouts. Welcome to the world of Lady P. Here is my residence. All of them, they are tenants. Some of them, they are my sisters. Some of them, they are my colleagues. And some of them, they are my... Come and see. <laughs> 
Princess Kuruma, also known as Lady P, was chosen by the sex workers to be their mama, their matriarch. She is a force of nature. And I don't get you. <laughs> this time it became when they go through hard time. Well, it's not easy for them. They go hard time. They don't get. So I did my next to the come go get. And right now, we don't know they. We don't even get nothing. At the end of the day, we will suffer. And they don't tell what social distances. If social distances is so, how are you going to meet somebody who is going to help you? I will get to leave you. I will go back home and get back to the car. I will get to the car. It's Monday, the one time. I need you money. This night, I am going to see sex workers go out for their business. We will follow them to the streets and see where they do their business. There are more than 1,000 sex workers in Makini, normally working well into the night, hustling to survive. The coronavirus curfew now means they must be home by 11 p.m., slashing their income. Then, a shocking reminder of the risk sex workers must take to feed themselves and their families. Why then yesterday I didn't walk through so bad in Makamaya. They go pulling parts there. Right now we wait for goats manners. Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday, eh? That lady they go kill. So right now we wait for go out. Hey, this lady, eh? Now give me some. A picture of the murdered woman is doing the rounds on sex worker social networks. So this this na sex worker. Sex worker. Pictures too of her mutilated body. Yes. 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 I'm on it. That goes so normal. We see the wrong go do so. It don't make me. I don't fear. I don't afraid. I don't afraid, man. There. As the money dries up, the risk increases. Most see no choice but to carry on. Many have children to provide for and no man around to help. Aisata is a 21-year-old single mother and turned to sex work aged 14. At 16, she became pregnant with her daughter Ramatu. Her boyfriend left before Ramatu was born. Right now, there's no hope. I said, I go for money. For my able to put me pick in school. Pass when it's a bitch, I go for it. But for all that sacrifice, I did do one for me, no, my able cancer. For my car, I do please me pick in. Like me, so I don't do receive so many pains than I take it. So I hope if me pick in can be like, they will fed for, they will fed for me, fed for the one day, it's his advantage part. Why are so many Sierra Leonean women like Aisata forced to risk their lives to sell sex? To me, this problem, like so much in my country, has its roots in our 11 years civil war in the 90s and early 2000s. It cast a terrible shadow over many lives here, shaping them still. To know the story of so many Sierra Leonean sex workers, look no further than Lady P and the day the rebels arrived in her life, age just 10.
Where me make that name? Me anti Europe. Who's a guy? Now top slow text. Eh, one of me who could tell me granny say, we don't there for three days. We don't get chop. Let me a granny go. Then go find chop. We go then go hold the. Then cow then be me to move. Me have been the up at the panels. Now now the outside and they keep the rest. Now they then be me granny me anti then kill them. You cut this into the lens and then cut this into. I don't know what to do, but I don't know what to do. See, they tell me for kill me during the war. You see? The rope now ends on me, so... This is my way to see. Now, God. I give up. You say, Ribbon and be fire. Who do you run? Then they capture me, then come and go inside Liberia. Be able to then capture you. Yeah? Like, mm. within the things they will do to you. No, then they're not going to explain the manager. I'm not going to explain now. Lady P finally returned to Sierra Leone in 2002 to find the country devastated. Papa died. Situation can't change. Myself, now I join prostitution. I've been there 14 years. Tragedy in Lady P's life wouldn't end there. In 2014, and by now married with children, the deadly Ebola epidemic devastated her family. By the way, we get three picking there, where one adopted two and get her. The sick affect them. So me say, where it affects me, my me can die, my man can die, then two picking and die. All man can die. In all, 20 members of Lady P's family died. But she does not let this tragic past stop her. Them bad, bad things they already happened to me. Because of it don't be my life experience before, and that make a stand for let that no repeat story. So because of that, I stand firm, I fight hard, I said to me, to me, lots of me drop blood na ground for the RCC. All every sex worker know in right, get in right, no matter what. Sitting there watching Lady P and listening to her, I felt like there is a big gap between her and the rest of the world. And that she is one of the strongest people I've ever known. I don't cry easily, but listening to Lady P makes me cry. As the weeks pass, the coronavirus death toll is not as bad as feared. By late May, there has been just 46 official deaths. But the nighttime curfew and the street lockdowns continue, and the sex workers' lives are ever more precarious. There has been another gruesome murder, and this time it's closer to home. What do you think? So this somehow creates fairness in Una? Yes. Gina yes. Wheeler was part of this group. She was just 19 when she was murdered. It could have been any of them. A few weeks earlier, Gina had broken district lockdown rules, traveling from Lady P's compound to Waterloo near the capital Freetown in search of sex work. 
her mutilated body was dumped in a swamp. What did the police and they do for friendly people away killer? I mean, no, see, that is what they do. No investigation, no nothing. I tracked down Gina's mother to see if she knows anything about the police investigation into her daughter's killing. As far as we know, the police or the government has done nothing to find justice for her. And so we want to come and see the mother today to know how she felt when she lose her daughter. On our morning again. This is painful for Aisha, Gina's mother. Girl for come for understand, see, nothing on the way they don't do for the die way that picking die. So we want to do some investigation for no waiting up your time, know that they're responsible, and see how the law will be able to hold them. Let you pick and get justice. What will I do so long we know the justice? The boys were kidding, picking. They've got me a Sabian. They've got me no side through the. Aisha is surrounded by her family. Running around her home are some of her 17 grandchildren, including Gina's six year old daughter, Rugiatu. Gina was the youngest of Aisha's five children. Her father, a soldier, was killed during the war. Yes, the other time he tell me, he said, I say me. He said, if God give me no more long life for anybody, he said, I can't make you turn to somebody. He said, I will help you. Well, me, what I feel? Now, paddy back, push him. Push him, I don't club there. Now, he push me, picking a line. I mean, they hang out for her. Then I'm the last one, I'm the last picking. Aisha is now left to look after Rugiatu. Mama and Papa are sorry to die. Me, 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 and my granny now, now we did. You see, my granny died now, we tried to do pass away and be big now, like. The family have no photographs of Gina. All Rugiatu can do is draw pictures of her mother from memory. When I be a player, eh? Who's play when I be a play? When they sit down, they laugh, laugh. When they smile to herself. I like my mama because she's back here like me. I say when I fetch for me. Any two I say when I do, I dey be a winner. Lady P calls me to say that Isata has been attacked. Well, the man he go meet me in a club. I didn't take my clothes and chair and my clothes and put me money in at 200,000. So in a day, we'll be really fed, fed, fed. So I fed for my common, I do when I take the gun. Because I can't kill me now. Money, if you go, na men are because na men are the man you. Not only does Aisata say her attacker was a police officer. But it was not the first time he'd allegedly beaten her up and robbed her. I take Aisata to the local hospital to be treated. Doctors write an official medical report which Aisata will use to file a complaint against the officer. This is something that seems like normal in their life, where men will just take advantage of them have sex with them, don't want to pay. 
ending up beating them, you know, physically abusing them. A week later, Aisata is not in a good way. Aisata, did? Yeah, he did. I say, you well or waiting? No, well, one sugar man will be and sleep and club. I said, uh, you will grab small? Yeah, grab, but manage for grab. So, how do you feel? I feel my body, the act, my eye. And you know, they go close from then days away, they went and beat away, you know. I have the left arm. It's two weeks since Aisata says a policeman assaulted her. Is she pressing ahead with the case against him? The way I be to get to now, I don't feel okay. So give me the updates by waiting, waiting they're happy now with the case now, police. Well, this morning I'm gonna stay sure because then company say say by your talk say for more said to la. I let my one month salary they will give me a Who's this issue where you want to follow? We're living in it, though. And I thank God, I don't okay now. If we go on a court, they pull in from Panama. I say, you go to the office, I need to. So now you the sorry for her? They come back and get feeling. I can get feeling. Why is me not much? I'm back now, much. I'm not go make them go shack outside and deliver. I'm not saying get picking them, get family, they don't want to take care of them. They go make them go pull in from Panama. We say we will take care of the kids in family living in our house. Don't see. With no word from police since Gina was killed, her mother Aisha needs answers. She wants to see where her daughter's body was discovered in Waterloo. No, that boat's call. I know they feel fine. So, you mother man, for beat, for kill you, take rope, then turn and neck, then can't lay, then can't dump an eye. Rather get get owner, rather get a person born. If me picking do the anything, part and can't can kill her. I can see she's a very strong woman. She doesn't cry easily, but you can feel she's in pain. Looking at what she wants to do, if the law system fails her, she wants to, by all means, get justice. Waterloo police are in charge of investigating Gina's killing. Aisha and I talk with the investigating officers, but despite Gina being killed four months earlier, we learn there has been little progress and her body remains in a mortuary. The police explanation feels odd. We've just come from the Waterloo police. The crime officer who was dealing with um, Gina's case told us that the police did not start an investigation because they did not find family members of Gina who we are supposed to go to the mortuary and pay for the autopsy. And until that was done the, and found the cause of death, only then the police will start an investigation. You seem confused. Yeah, confused. Would you be the expect say by today now nine the police and for don't do? Well, I can expect say, eh, this book is clear. Well, we take her. Now also so the man who oh, 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 suspect, and then I jail, and then I prison, and I then go there, 
Uh -huh. But that, they all knock out onto me. So at this moment, what you decide now in mind? Well, me, I decide to they left every time they go and they go back. The police are saying it's a neglect. You neglected the body of your daughter. If I am Mami Aisha, a poor woman, who is not afraid with the law, you will be scared. You will think maybe the police can do something to me. She will prefer to stay away and leave it like it is. Because one thing she knows is there is nothing she can do to bring back the daughter. Later, I get a chance to question a senior police officer on camera. Is it fair that family should pay for postponing if that is indeed true? I don't know what is the law. Um, if he loses, they must pay, they will pay. If he loses, they are not supposed to pay. If they pay, that's an offense. But I, don't, I don't know what is the law. What guarantees can you so give to the mother that is justice it, will be done? There is going to be fair investigation on the part of the police. And then trust me, um, if we're able to get the evidence, or the facts we are looking for, and we're able to lay hands on whoever did that thing. Trust the police that we are going to take that individual to court. And I'm sure when that, matter go to, when that matter goes to court, we can get justice for the murder. Back in Makini, I learned Isata has decided with Lady Peace backing to take the policeman she accused of assaulting her to court. But there is a problem, a big problem. Yesterday we went to um, follow Lady P and I sat out, which was like a plan that they are going to see the police yesterday to know when this issue will be sent to court. Unfortunately, we went there and Aisata was nowhere to be found. Aisata has been missing for 24 hours. She hasn't even returned to look after her young daughter. We are going to hook up with Lady P to try and see how we can continue the shot for Aisata. Any of you pump, you know, the way they be come out the next day? At all. So now you want to go? Now you want to go. Because you know, say they go do you. Call man, they go on you. And that's why I said that. 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 I said But then, we meet a woman who was with Aisata the night she went missing. I said, I will go to the club before I study. We will go to the club. You see, one more to Kaka, come up for it to wake up. Wake up, and then Monday, now we did a club, we did a wedding, and I didn't load them go. I don't know if I said to them, I came or not. I'm not sure. You're not telling me where we go? Days pass and there is no sign of Isata. With no other leads, Lady P and I decide to go to Freetown to see if we can find her. Lady P's son, Prince, comes along too. We split up and scour the streets for news. For two days and nights, we search. I don't understand say if you didn't have to hear. Then we visit a friend of Lady P's, Mama Juice. One of her girls is plugged into the local scene. Maybe she has seen something. Yeah, hello? 
Okay, the picture are the person who has more skill and yellow one. He get bobo in the teeth. Yeah. Uh huh. Hey, the nongo. Okay, bye bye. Love you, ya. You know, you know, talk us anybody. You know, talk about the man the way they go today. Yeah, it's say the man and the same we went on today. He said, I'm going to say, just no more than They say, but they say they get program, they get one, they go to Banjo. So they make them go there. It appears Isata has been trafficked more than a thousand kilometers to the Gambia's capital, Banjo. Notorious as a sex tourism hotspot, a place where foreigners pay big money to sleep with women. Lady P takes the news hard. Now, first and foremost, sir. Now, first and foremost, sir. First and foremost, no good. I don't want to see. I know, say, mama disturbed because of waiting. You don't can get. You know how to talk to me now because you don't can no see. The people are first and foremost, and for pulling a marquee, we are like a kidnap. Later. After she calms down, I discover why Lady P is so worried. When she was younger, she was taken to the Gambia. Not by force like Isata. Lady P went willingly. But what she found when she got there was worlds away from what she had been promised. Gambia, where you go there? They want to be careful them picking and go to the What do you tell them? I would go to the meat. He tell them, I say, where well, they go, they go work for themselves. Where well, they go, they go down that slavery. So they can't tell me, don't go see what happened to them picking and they. I don't go and say, none of them picking for good. But then, okay, situation all the way, they picking, they go, they do it, they tell you, say, something tell like, man, they can get them. No, then they will, now they say they get them. Then they will not to deep as they explain to myself. For the day, they not pay you, beat you, rape you, then they will, then they call sex worker. Two months pass with no contact from Isata. I'm seriously starting to fear the worst. And then, out of the blue, Isata gets in church. Desperate calls and voice messages trickle in. Isata is calling from a number in Mali. I try to call Aisata back many times, but her phone seldom works. When I do get hold of her, my relief is sometimes overwhelming. Hello? Yes. Aisata. Yes. Thank God I know it will get you today. Finally, over several calls, I pieced together what happened to Isata and the other kidnapped Makini sex workers. Isata tells me the gang sold them to a Nigerian woman. She then forced them to sell sex to pay her off. Now, here is sister no more. Yes. Which one? What's your name? I came. 
Aisata sends me pictures of her and Aiki in a Mali village, which she says was built around a gold mine. But this is no safe haven. Aisata says she and Aiki are regularly raped by miners. If you don't agree for rape, what do they do? Director, you the women don't know exactly where the Mali gold mining village is. I try to work it out, but I cannot pinpoint it. There is one chink of hope though. Aike and Aisata have befriended a miner called Abu who is letting them use his phone to contact me. Could Abu be the key to bringing them home? I think there is hope that we can get Aisata back safe. But I am scared that if there is a delay, for that delay in trying to get her back, then she'll be in more danger. When Aisata vanished, her mother Porsche, a market trader, stepped in to look after Aisata's daughter full time. I'm eager to meet her to talk about Aisata being trafficked to Mali but it doesn't go as I expected. Unfortunately, she nearly, you know, um, attacked me. She was shouting at me. She's ashamed of the life her daughter is living. She told me she tried so hard for Aisata not to end up as a sex worker. But all her efforts went in vain, so she's hungry. If the biological mother can give up to her daughter, and she is the first daughter, the first child, it is easy for society to just, you know, give up on sex workers, to not care for them, to not give them the support they need. I wonder if Ike's mom, Kadiatu, feels the same. I hope not. I go to what I think is the right address. Good morning, yeah? No, good morning. Thank God. Um, also, I have a picture. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. What's up? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hmm? This is the first time Kadiatu has heard about her daughter's whereabouts for months. When IK disappeared for longer than normal, Kadiatu grew anxious. Maps papa be a bad sound. Opi are piali anieko. Kera tama lom. Ngal chene nengo. Kera lom two days. Beka three days on. Before chene ngal diro o diro no shit. Mine sabat chia rinse mene mene chia kabuk. Chia ngko ntofili. Ande rampo. Kongin kono mbawa ni berai. Kongin tasi oya. Lady P story is in many ways the story of Sierra Leone over the last 30 years. Despite suffering so much pain, she shows great strength and courage. All this place is a grave site. 
It's full of graves. Maybe close to 1,000 people were buried in this place in the space of a year. Among the graves are those of Lady P's closest relatives. But it's been many years since she last came here, and now it's overgrown. Yes. Now, family back later on. This is because I don't tell you. My family is around this year. My mom back now inside. Then picking the back now inside. For me, I keep up on that year. Now. I don't want there to be any more death in Lady P's life. I don't want Aisata or Ike to die. As we go to leave the graveyard, I notice a missed call from Aisata. I call her back. Swinging. What's happening? What's happening? I don't want to I don't want to good morning. Yeah. Mama, no, I'm here. No, I'm here. So, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. This thing go take the under. Then go take there because then begin a small, small. Different man they can follow the NAPD. Then go take there. Then go die there. Action is needed. We have no choice but to see if Abu, the minor Isata and IK are staying with, can help. Una, una, una believe him? Yeah, we believe him. So if they able to call him, they able to show us how they are, then we will be able to try to take him out of the I contact a Malian journalist, Momodu Tapili, to speak to Abu and track Isata and IK down. If we can find them, the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, a UN body which can aid trafficked people, agrees to help Aisata and IK return home. Tapili makes contact with Abu. Finally, we know where the mining village is, an hour's drive from the town of Keneba. When the girls are in Tapili's hands, we'll all be sure that they are safe now. He will drive them, take them back to Bamako. Wow, speak of the devil. He's calling now. He's calling now. So, I'll... hello. Hello, Mr. Tyson. Hey, Tapili, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You are still heading on? Okay. It still remains like 250 kilometers to get there, but uh, we still uh, keep going on. Oh my God, you are going on a short, a long journey. Yeah. So by tomorrow, I hope uh, we'll be with the lady. All right, all right, Apili. Thanks so much, bro. So, <clears throat> today is the, the day. Um, I've just heard from Tapli that he's left Kaniba and heading to the village, which is about 40 kilometers, and that he hoped to be there in one hour. I wait nervously with Kadiatu, I case mom as Tapili finally arrives at the spot where he's arranged to meet Abu. Uh, 
Aike appears anxious. Okay. Uh, Isata and Ike. Aike, thank you very much. This is a brothel, and some people are getting twitchy about the camera. Here, there's a lot of girls, they don't feel so secure. Time to leave. After three months, the women are finally safe and on their way to the IOM in Mali's capital, Bamako. One step closer to coming home. Ah, hey, Asata. <laughs> Okay. The camera for you. Shellers. Shellers. Here, no hairy. Did I? Feel fine, oh. Mo kita buat ila okur macam bau ramai hari. Oto follow aja, kau nampak tu no. Mau ini buat mo mo kumu fon fifa ni muka aku oto follow aja, kau nampak tu no. The eternal bond between a mother and daughter. Even in death, it cannot be broken. Eight months after Gina's death, her mother Aisha still mourns her, still hopes justice will be done and her daughter's killer will be caught. But there are no developments in the case. Gina was buried in January. Finally, she can rest in peace instead of lying in a mortuary. But what life awaits the other sex workers? Today marks the day that we are going to receive Aisata and Ike. They are coming back home after more than six months. Their mothers are traveling with us. A few months ago, Porsche, Aisata's mom, told me that she had given up on her daughter. But today, she decides to make the journey. Lady P is also coming to welcome her sister's home. We are all here ready. Parents are outside waiting for their daughters. They can't wait. It's a joy, you know. It's a celebration for me in my mind, my heart, because I was not thinking it's going to turn out this way. We are happy that these girls are finally coming back. Aisata and Ike spent three months with the IOM in Mali, who checked out their stories of kidnap and trafficking. They have the UN body to thank for returning them home. So I don't come. The moment finally comes to meet their mothers and, of course, Lady P. My kids are around 
me today. Yes, you're happy for ah, mother, I'm happy. The word happy is not so long. These lives that we are almost lost, we regain them. They come back to the family. Today, the mothers have their daughters, and the daughters have their mothers back. I saw Isata's mom crying deep in her heart. She still has the love for her daughter.